Hello and welcome to this Data Protector demo video series. In this episode, we're going to talk about VMware hypervisor integrations. In this demo session, we're talking about virtual machine backup and we have chosen uh, VMware virtual machines to be, to be backed up. In Data Protector, uh, this would be configured in the backup section where you find all the integrations that we support. One of them is virtual integration or virtual environments that we support. This is actually where uh, VMware and Hyper-V backups are configured. To create a backup job and to run it, you kind of uh, choose from existing templates or certain configurations at the very beginning, and then you pick from your virtual machine environment. In this case, we're addressing the vCenter server to give us an overview of all the systems that are available. And the second choice we need to make is a backup host, which is a, a VMware proxy server that is actually streaming the data to the backup devices, and then it will scan the data center and organization and display all the results. From the data center view, you can pick individual data centers or organizations like, like a main data center or the R data center to backup from. Next up is uh, an overview of virtual machines and their configurations, where the usual default is an overview of hosts and clusters. So if you browse down from here, you see the data center configuration that you've chosen, the cluster that is installed, individual ESX servers and groups, folders, and everything that uh, VMware is made of. So if you want to just take away a number of systems with certain similar uh, procedures, you can just pick whatever kind of folder or resource pool, resource group assignment, and everybody in that group, in that pool, will be backed up in one go. So that's kind of the default over here. You can also pick for data stores and storage, where you may want to see an overview of all the data stores that your VMware environment has available. So all the virtual machines sitting in a certain data store are backed up, so you can browse from here again to even select individual items, but the, the most common choice is to back up everybody that is in a certain data store with one mouse click and everybody being introduced into the store or moved over will be backed up with that single assignment. You can also select for tags and categories to make life easier in terms of um, organization. So let's go back to the default host and clusters overview and, and run a couple of configuration items. Let's say we have made up the virtual machine that we want to back up. We uh, either select it in a complete way or on an individual VDisk kind of selection. So this is the smallest uh, entity that you can pick from. In most cases, the whole virtual machine is backed up with all the virtual disks included before. So let's say we're backing up a single virtual machine, and this is what I selected over here. The next page will show you the available backup devices. And as, as you can see here, this could be whatever all sorts of devices with all sorts of connection. This could be network-based, iSCSI, Fiber Channel SAN, cloud-based, and so on and so forth. So this is where you select uh, the, the target. So let's pick up one of those devices. And you have a number of additional options, uh, like running certain scripts uh, before or after the backup, additional security being added, and reporting levels being defined. From here, you would actually start a backup that you configured that way. So let's just pick one of those existing backups and, and run it from here. You can start it as a full or incremental or differential backup, and you can predefine some network load so this particular backup job will now initiate and it will look at the resources to be backed up. It will identify the virtual machines and their disk layout, and it will connect the data source, which is the, the individual items of a virtual machine, with a backup device that we have chosen uh, a minute ago. Okay, so this particular backup job has now finished and we we're seeing overall backup statistics and a lot of additional information coming in from data protector being reported. So this particular backup had five individual backup streams running in parallel, each at around 40 megabytes per second, making up a total of a, a 200 megabytes per second backup. Another way of configuring a backup is also making use of disk array snapshot technology, which is chosen right off the beginning of the configuration. First of all, you pick the individual storage provider you want to use. So we're supporting a number of storage vendors over here. You can also select to keep replicas after the backup. So these are your snapshots on the storage system. And and you can actually have some uh, number of snapshots being rotated so you always have a less known good state available. 
which means that your uh, VMware environment is completely kept off uh, any backup I.O., and there is no disruption or no performance loss during the backup is running. Now, on the restore side, you have a number of options as well. So if you look at the restore overview over here, you go to virtual environment and pick your vCenter server, and you see those backups that we just done or that have been previously done. So you see all those kind of machines being shown here. The typical feature you have here is like being able to restore an individual disk or a complete virtual machine or a group of virtual machines or a complete cluster or data center. So that's kind of the, the, the basic choices you have over here. So let's just say we want to select this particular virtual machine. Then you see on the right hand side, you have a number of additional options showing up. So we can do a standard restore, which is kind of overriding the existing virtual machine. You can also power on the virtual machine from that backup device, which means that no restore in that sense is done. The machine only powers up from backup. You can run certain tools on it and check on it or, or virus scan it before you actually run the, the actual restore. Or you can do a live migration, which is powering on the virtual machine first, and then in the background, uh, running the restore to the selected data store. Uh, the virtual machine is available all the time during that restore process, so an administrator doesn't need to wait for that virtual machine to be completely restored before um, they can use it. So in this particular case, we may want to restore the virtual machine that we just backed up. That was IMDP66. So that's kind of the machine we want to restore. So let's say we want to do a full-blown restore to the original destination. This concludes our uh, virtual machine backup demo for today. Thank you.